Hello and welcome to RC Shin from my hangar once more. Today I want to show you this and you don't have to do a lot of guessing to know what could be in this little case here. But just take a look at how small it is compared to let's say the Taranis. So it's a really small suitcase and it's just a soft, soft shell thing which is meant to be stored in the backpack and I open it up you see that it's a folding cotton and it really folds to a nice and small form factor and you can even leave the props on so this is the Black Snapper XS, the Black Snapper Mini and as it's bigger brother, you can just unfold the motor arms. It's an all it's an all carbon setup. And just screw on the antenna. As I mentioned earlier, I like to have the antenna pointed a big bit backwards, so if you fly forwards it's straight, which is good for video quality. Here I already uh, mounted the, uh, not the biggest, but almost the biggest battery you can get away with. It's a 2200 mAh 3-cell. You could use this as a 4-cell setup. The ESCs I'm using here like it, but I'm not sure about the motors. We'll have to check that out. But 3-cell is enough. Uh, I did some really nice flights already and 3-cell is just just nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the maiden of this thing. I did this week and this week I flew almost every day because it worked out so nicely. So this is the first test flight of the Snapper Mini or the Snapper XS. Okay, my first flight with one shot. Wish me luck. Ah, it flies, yeah, it flies. Ah, it feels so stable, it's really nice. Really nice. Can live with that. Yeah, and after I saw that those first flights worked well, line of sight, I tried my first FPV flight here. And it instantly worked so well that I did my standard stunt here, which was a bit tricky. Yeah, but it really worked nice of course the rates and everything was really set to low so i didn't have a lot of reaction with the quad and the next day so each day of this week i tried to test and, and fly as much as i could the next day on my flight field in Klocknitz, it was a more comfortable flight because I knew everything works and it's really so smooth. And here you see the low RC rates. I will show you which rates I had back there. You can't do fast rolls with low rates, of course. But it's it would be okay for for dynamic flying and for, for plane-like flying for aerial photography. But if you want to do a roll or flip or something, you have to set up the RC rates in the clean flight software. And it's really lovely to see the autumn colors conquering all the leaves here. On this session I had my laptop with me, so I could set up the pits and the RC rates. So for this next flight, the RC rates were higher 
maybe they are okay now. But this this takes some some flying to see if you like how the copter behaves. But I didn't do a lot of pit tuning. I, I just guessed uh, good pits and only tweaked tweaked them a bit after the first flights because with those uh, one shot and active dampening enabled ESCs it just feels feels right and only the pros will will need more tweaking because they have to have a really really good setup but for me it's okay and it really makes a difference this uh, lux float or lux float controller i'm using here is 32 bit controlling and it has just a high update rate and very exact behavior and you can really fly nice with it Yeah, and with, with each flight I felt more comfortable with this new quad. So when I spotted this tractor here, I immediately went to aerial filming mode and forgot about the testing. And it's really stable too for, for uh, such filming sessions. Of course it's more aimed as a, as a fast racing quad. But the colors turned out really nice here and I wanted to film this farm here. Next I do my standard dive test here in safe grounds, where I fly up a bit and then about 45 degrees and see if the quad is still stable, if it's shaking, but this looks nice, so this mini quad I'm not sure about its range though, but it will be capable of doing some nice divings in the mountains. Of course I, I only, uh, about the flight time, I only have about 5 minutes with the 1500 milliamp 3 cells. Maybe you get 7 minutes with 2200s. I will see about this later. Yeah, and back the next day back on the Eichberg always changing between these places to fly. I uh, really enjoyed some tree surfing here. But uh, I think, yeah, this, this was another very windy day and I'm astonished how good this little setup handles the wind. Because normally with, with small mini quads, if you have winds, uh, it's all shaky. But this here, yeah, it, it is a bit shaky, but it's, it's really nice, so that's a good plus. To the copter itself, I listed you all the parts in the description of this video. Uh, I used the um, iFly 1806 motors. For ESCs I use Emax 12 amp one shot enabled by default um, ESCs from Quadcopters Ento. Those ECs are really, really small, but you have no BEC in it. So you gotta use a separate BEC, which I also link you in the description. For connecting all the motor cables and power cables, I use the power distribution board, a small one from Quadcopters Enzo, which was about 3 euros. And this one is nice because it has some switches for the LEDs and the video TX if you want to switch it off. Okay, so just enjoy this lovely autumn sunset here in my field.
So you've seen the flight videos, it really flies smooth with the NACE 32. I'm really getting more and more of a fan of the new flight controllers. It was about time for me to move to them. KK2 is nice and easy, but it's very outdated. So really smooth flying even in winds, which is a big plus for me. Uh, so let's take a look at the build pictures. Upon building, uh, it's just screwing together a few frame parts, which is not too, too hard. The whole frame is held together with a few screws. About one of the downsides of these small quads is that you have a lot of cables inside the frame. And if you have, want to change something, uh, you have to remove the top plate which can, it, it's not, not so much of a hassle as I thought because I already had to change the lens of my cam because the initial lens I had didn't work so well with the fat shark. All the colors were washed out, almost black-white, but with blue sky. Then I realized that I used another lens which had no infrared coating on the inside. So check this out if you have a fat shark with, with, with ugly colors, it might just be the wrong lens type. So I had to unscrew the top plate and, and fill it around with the, with the cam, but it, it worked. It was half an hour of work maybe. So, but other than that, building this quad was really, really easy and nice. The soldering job with the power distribution board is nice and easy. I had some issues with soldering on the the pin headers for the NACE 32, but that's just because I'm not very good at soldering. Uh, but other than this, uh, the first flights I was really uh, curious if this thing will fly, if I hooked up everything correct, but it really worked on the first attempts. So all in all, really nice quad and I'm always looking for small setups like this, which I can uh, throw in my backpack and just be able to fly almost anywhere, anytime. For camera setup, um, the camera plate with the vibration dampening here is meant for uh, flat type cams, Mobius or Round Cam HD. But if, if you want to fit a GoPro, it's, it's no problem either. Yeah. Enough space and very good dampening. So. For the first flights, you see here in this video, I used the um, Runcam HD, which has really, really sharp and nice image. But for the next flights, I used the SJ Cam with 60 frames and you will really see the difference. And it's really hard to go back from 60 frames to 30 once you're used to it. So Stay tuned for my next video with this setup. I already had some very nice flights in 60 frames with it. Okay, so that's about it. Thanks for watching this video. As always, leave me your comments. If I didn't cover something in my description down there, uh, if you're missing some links or something, just tell me. Uh, I want you to be able to find all the infos you need if you want this setup. So thanks for watching, please subscribe if you're new to this channel, give me some thumbs up, you, you know all the stuff that makes me happy. <laughs> okay, so bye.